morning or afternoon or wherever time it is whenever you're listening to this podcast. I pray that you are doing well and enjoying all things fall. Um, We have actually had a few fall-like days here recently. Um, The past few weeks, it's been like fall like one day, hot the next. Um, But hopefully fall is actually here to stay. We actually were able to take our grands to the zoo without dying of heat exhaustion, and we had a really great time. And then I'm looking forward to a pumpkin patch or a fall festival or something soon. I recently went to a church leadership conference, and it was so powerful. I love getting to learn from amazing godly leaders and fellowship with other believers. But more than anything, I love the time set aside to just spend time with God and allow Him to speak to me. Before I even went to the conference, God had begun showing me areas of disobedience that I had. A little background is needed here. Several years ago, I was a very shy, disobedient daughter. Every time I felt God nudged me to do something out of my comfort zone, I would argue and tell God that he could not possibly mean me. I finally got so fed up with myself that I promised God I would not tell him no anymore. And for the most part, that has been the case. I have stopped, stepped out and prayed for people, gave a word of um, knowledge when prompted, led mission trips that were miles beyond my comfort zone. And I'm thankful for that time. Um, It has grown my faith so much. Recently, I can't say I have been openly disobedient like when I would basically tell God, nope, you have the wrong person. But I have questioned God a lot. And God has been showing me how partial obedience or even delayed obedience is still disobedience. If you are saying, ouch, I am right there with you. I have said more than once that I am guilty of being a Moses. In Exodus 3, God speaks to Moses from a burning bush. Moses, of course, does not doubt that it is God that is speaking to him as it is from a burning bush and the bush does not burn up. But as you read in chapter 4, you can see that Moses does doubt that God can use him. Exodus 4, 11, Moses said to the Lord, pardon your servant, Lord. I have never been eloquent, neither in past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. Have you ever had a similar conversation with God? I know I have. I hate to admit it, but far more than I should have because I shouldn't have had it at all. And that's why I became frustrated with myself and promised God that I would tell him no no longer. Now back to Moses. So do you think that God said, all right, what was I thinking? I did not know that you did not speak well. Let me find someone else. Of course not. Verse 11 through 12, the Lord said to him, who gave human beings their mouths? Who makes them deaf or mute? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will help you speak and will teach you what you should say. You think that Moses would now be agreeable. He has God speaking to him from a burning bush that he will teach him and tell him what he wants to say. It's hard to believe that anyone could refuse God in this moment. But uh, But Moses does just that. Verse 13, but Moses said, pardon your servant, Lord, please send someone else. Are you feeling a little judgy of Moses right now? I get it. It is hard to imagine telling God no when he is literally speaking to you from a burning bush that is not burning up. But then I remember all the times that I've told God no, and I understand Moses, and how he is letting the fear of man control his obedience. God allows Moses to have Aaron as his mouthpiece. Exodus 4, 14 through 16. 
Moses and Aaron go to, G to Egypt. God uses, uses Moses to perform many miracles that I won't list here, but please read Exodus to learn of staffs turning to snakes, water turned to blood, multiple plagues, plagues, and ends with parting a sea so that God's people can flee slavery in Egypt. Then there is the wilderness. God's people test Moses and God's patience at every turn. God continues to use Moses for the good of his people. The Hebrews do not trust God even after all that he did to rescue them from Egypt. They want to return to their slavery. God finally did, does become fed up with them when they do not trust God to protect them to enter Canaan. Caleb and Joshua are the only ones that trust the Lord to protect them and allow them to live in the land of milk and honey. So God's people wander the desert for 40 years. There are so many things that we can learn from the life of Moses. Stories of trust, faithfulness, glory. But today we are going to focus on obedience. You would think that Moses would have obedience down by now. You would think that God would say to jump and Moses would not hesitate to jump. He wouldn't even ask how high. He would just jump and allow God to do the rest. But that is not the case. In Numbers 20, the Hebrews are grumbling again that they do not have water. I try to have grace for God's people because I have done my share of grumbling, but they do make it difficult. God has provided water and all that they need, yet they grumble. In Numbers 20, 7 through 8, God told Moses to take the staff and Aaron, gather the assembly, and speak to the rock before their eyes, and it will pour out its water. But, verse 10, he and Aaron gathered the assembly together in front of the rock, and Moses said to them, Listen, you rebels, must we bring water out of this rock? Then Moses raised his arms and struck the rock with his staff twice. Water gushed out and the community and their livestock drank. Did Moses obey God? Water did flow the, from the rock, but Moses had instructed God, I'm sorry, but God had instructed Moses to speak to the rock, not strike it. Because of this choice, Moses and Aaron do not enter the promised land. Numbers 20:12. 20, but the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, because you did not trust in me enough to honor me as holy in the sight of the Israelites, you will not bring this community in the land I give them. My first response to this was, well, that's not fair. But then I think about all that God has allowed Moses to do. All the miracles that Moses has walked out with the Lord. I highly recommend reading them all for yourself. I cannot fit it all in. And I understand how partial obedience is still disobedience. God had already struck, had water flow from a struck rock. Maybe he wanted a deeper impact. Why didn't Moses do as God said? I kind of think that maybe he was frustrated and wanted to hit something. I kind of understand why. But the reasons do not matter. Our holy God gave instructions to be followed for the good of his children and for Moses. We do not get the luxury of choosing the instructions that we want to follow. We have to follow them all and trust that God will take care of the rest. Are you confused how a loving God would not allow Moses to enter the promised land after all that he had done to lead his people through the wilderness? I understand. I have these same feelings. In a Bible study I am doing, I was reminded of Moses' final moments. The 34th chapter of Deuteronomy tells us how God brought Moses to Mount Nebo and showed him the promised land. Then Moses died without ever having his eyes dim or his body lose its vigor. Then God himself laid Moses' body to rest. I don't know, but that sounds very loving to me. Moses had so many intimate moments with God and even his fi final moments were in the presence of his loving father 
and God buried him. I mean, like God himself buried Moses. No one else knows where he is buried. Also, in Matthew 17, Moses visits Jesus in the Promised Land. Thank you, Angie Smith, for opening my eyes to that fun fact. I'm doing her Bible study seamless, and I had never connected that dot before. I had multiple times read of the two prophets visiting with Moses, I mean with Jesus, and you know, then they're wanting to raise tabernacles, all that. But I had never connected the dots that Moses is in the promised land. Praise God. Um, so I highly recommend that Bible study. It's been really good. So my son, Caleb Joshua, his name is not a coincidence. It's one of the reasons why, yes, I love this story, was recently talking to me about his kiddos and raising them. He told me that the one area he does not tolerate disobedience is, is when he, t he tells his kids to come here. This is because from a safety point, safety standpoint, there may be a time for their safety. He needs them to come to him quickly for their protection. He can't have his children debate the reason he needs them to, to, to obey. He cannot have his children debate the reason he needs them to obey or the why. They need to run to their loving father because he has told them to, and that is reason enough. Can you see the correlation here? I often do not obey God immediately. Instead, I question if I really heard him or debate the why he is asking me to do this. But God only asks me to do things that are in the best interest of his children. See Luke, thir Luke 11, 13. There is a phrase that I heard, have heard on a lot of different podcasts in the last year. It is paralysis by analysis. And man, does that ring true. We can get so bogged down in the analysis of, is this really God that we are paralyzed? And it makes us very ineffective Christ followers. Now, I'm not telling you to not pray and process things out with God, but there is a big difference in praying to God for guidance and arguing with him. The prayers of a righteous man availeth much, James 5.16. We need to be in prayer and asking God for direction. But if God tells you to go pray for someone in the grocery store and you spend the next several minutes debating if he really is asking you to do that, that person is going to be gone before you even have a chance to obey. And just maybe that is the reason for the debate in the first place. Maybe it's not that you don't believe that you are supposed to do something, but that you just don't want to. I am guilty of letting the fear of man rule me more than often than I like to admit. And I have also been guilty of paralysis by analysis. But if what you feel the Lord prompting, prompting you to do is biblical, then you can't go wrong in following his prompting. Meaning, God is not going to ask you to go punch someone in the face, but he might ask you to go pray for them. I want to wrap this up with an apology. I have been grudgingly obedient in this podcast. I've asked God multiple times why he wants me to do this. I have repented to him, but I also want to apologize to you. This stretches me in a very public way, but the why is not important. My obedience is. I do hope that this podcast is a blessing to others, but if it's just between me and God, that is okay too. I do not want to be partially obedient and therefore disobedient anymore. I want us all to be able to enter the promised land. Thank you so much. Until next time, y'all be blessed. I hope this podcast is a blessing to you. And if you have enjoyed this Christ-inspired message, please like and follow my page.